everybody, you know, tech is uh, reshaping our business and personal lives in so many ways uh, now more than ever. And immersive mixed reality like AR and VR is being used in uh, a number of ways to connect people while keeping people at a safe distance, which is certainly what we need uh, right now. Two gentlemen here with Grid Raster uh, joining me to talk about this more specifically about AR and VR and some of these projects. Uh, from Grid Raster. And Rishi, I'm going to start with you if you want to introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Rishi, CEO of Grid Raster. And at Grid Raster, we have a cloud platform for Mitsuyashi. Okay. And Dijam, go ahead. Hi, Karan. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Dijam. Um, uh, I, I'm one of the co founders of Grid Raster and currently take care of the business de development, marketing, and partnership for the company. And we are looking forward to the enormous opportunity this kind of uh, pandemic provides to kind of support anywhere which we can. Let's stay with you here. Um, talk a little bit about because of this pandemic and the situation that we're all in, you know, across the world. How are you seeing, um, you know, the increase for for the use cases here for AR and VR in business? This is a situation. It's not like the the pandemic is something that we are all worried about. But uh, to be honest, from a, a AR VR industry perspective, it has actually been a been a kind of a boon uh, because this is a medium which kind of allows you to do something. The next best thing you can do in terms of being physically there, okay. And this is an excellent medium that kind of solves that problem right now. What the restrictions are there around like uh, traveling and uh, uh, people operating from uh, from the from houses, and you still need to have those businesses keep on running. And this is a medium kind of providing excellent opportunities on that. A uh, few few of the use cases where um, uh, this has been uh, really amazing has been trying to kind of you repair and maintain any of those equipments uh, remotely. All of a sudden, all these complex machines, whether you are talking in, in the medical industry or aerospace and defense, automotive, this is being now serviced remotely and this is made possible only because of augmented reality and virtual reality. Otherwise, uh, it, it would have been a big struggle with uh, all that restriction around travel and social distancing norms and all being in place. The other has been on the training front. I mean, there is nothing which is as good. You can't do anything better than kind of train people in virtual environment like with VR and AR, which is uh, uh, which which has been huge in terms of keeping those businesses kind of running. I mean, this is at least a couple of use cases which have been absolutely tremendous uh, to keep many of those companies. You will see, like whether it's Nestle, or whether it's Ford, whether um, you know, any, any take any um, uh, industry, um, big big companies over there, they have been leveraging this technology to keep things kind of moving during this pandemic. Okay, yeah, and and Rishi, let's let's talk to you a little bit about some of the specific ways you're seeing this with with training and um, and, and other ways to keep people connected from a safe distance. Talk a little bit more about that. Right. So just to uh, capture that, uh, like we are very focused right now on uh, aerospace, automotive, and defense manufacturing. And but whatever I say now, you can map it to medical, all, all the other use cases. Exactly the same things are happening in other uh, verticals use cases also. So in case of uh, training, right? So now our customers, you can't you can't bring your our customers cannot bring their customers, their employees on on premise. There are restrictions all the time that only you can run at ten percent capacity. Now with mixed reality, the the their employees can start training on all these complex machines in their living room. Right. So suddenly, like, uh, and they expect this whole uh, uh, work from home restriction to at least remain there for one and a half year more till vaccines and everything are out. So now they're seeing that they don't have to really slow down on any front on training. They can train on a very complex spacecraft, uh, spaceships, cars, all of those. They can keep uh, training. They can even keep designing all of these, those things without any significant impact on their processes. And same thing, uh, uh, and you can see that similar thing in medical that now doctors cannot travel, but now the people who are remotely, they can get a very hands-on uh, help remotely from the, from the doctors who are expert. Uh, we, again, we are not focused on those verticals uh, right now, but we know that very similar use cases are being used in the other verticals also. Excellent. And when we talk a little bit, did you talk about some of the challenges that you see that companies face when trying to implement or, you know, what are some of the challenges that keep the companies from scaling these type of projects? What do you see there? Yeah, so, uh, so a couple of things, right? So first thing is that mixed reality is uh, new, right? So again, 
in some of the verticals, especially uh, in defense sector, it has been used for 30, 40 years. So they are very, very used to using these, but other one, other ones that good devices are just getting used. They are just getting available right now, right? So a lot of those use cases, people are trying to ramp up fast, but it's a new medium. We have never seen this medium being used before. So just content creation is a big deal. The devices are not fully fully there, so you can use it into the certain use cases, but it's not that you can use it in any any kind of use cases yet. So those are the restrictions out there. The scaling other problem is that that when you look at the mixed area devices, these are the screens sitting on your face, right? So it's very critical that it should be light. Uh, if you have to carry half, one pound device on your face, your neck will start hurting after 30 minute use. Uh, things are moving in that direction uh, in the end, and uh, but the problem is that the kind of experience, the spatial uh, augmentation that we are trying to bring, it brings a, it needs a lot of compute, a lot of uh, processing before you can provide that help to the user. And that's where we come in that we, we bring all of those uh, uh, low compute loads on the cloud. So we relieve the device to be much lighter. You don't have to tether to your PC and all those things to use it. But still the device side also, devices are uh, improving. There are known rumors that Apple is working on the glasses, which will hopefully come in a couple of years and it will become like the coolers. So those will go ahead and remove a lot of those uh, friction that still people are feeling as a new uh, new medium. But then creating the content, how do you create the content best? Those are also the friction points that people are facing. Uh, some people, some of the verticals we are in different sector, we have seen that people have been using it for uh, tens of years. So they are much more advanced and that is where the, a lot of those uh, learnings will come in and it will help the ecosystem. But some of the other verticals where they are just starting to use and trying to catch up very fast, those friction points are still there. Okay, and finally, Dija, let's go to you. Talk a little bit about, do you see, I know we talked about some of the, the larger companies and Nestle and, and, and uh, groups like that, but when you talk about smaller businesses, smaller companies that have much smaller budgets and you know, digital transformation for some of them, they're just moving through that right now and being forced to because of the pandemic. How do you see those smaller companies and businesses uh, you know, coming into the fall with AR and VR? Do you see them starting to see the benefit and, and trying to find the money in their budget to make this happen? Uh, no, I, I say like it's a, a great question. And that's something like uh, we think is for our overall ecosystem and for the AR, VR uh, use case to real pick, pick up, it has to move beyond. The, the big thing, you know, with, with the pandemic, what has happened is now because of this whole situation, there has also been a urgency that has come to this. Now, the things that I've been dabbing with and trying to plan to do it over maybe the next couple of years and all, all of a sudden this all has to kind of shrink within a few weeks or a few months because they know that without, without using this medium, some of their businesses, they cannot operate, continue to operate the way they really want to operate. And we are seeing that. We are seeing that in terms of the interest that we are kind of getting. We are seeing that in terms of even our application partners who are kind of working there, they, they are getting those requests. The platform that we are, we are providing here uh, is kind of designed towards that, that how do you drive down the total cost of ownership, the cost with which like, you know, even... Um, even beyond those large players can actually leverage this medium. Uh, the cloud-based approach that we are taking kind of allows them to do that in a much, much um, economical way and across, you know, a location, uh, getting multiple users to work in that environment. So we are solving a lot of that problem. So we are definitely seeing a lot of interest uh, to pick up those medium for these businesses. Yeah, like you said, there's, it's just the, the reality of, of the situation we're in now that companies need to keep moving forward, but trying to keep people apart while yeah. still training and learning and, uh, you know, conducting business is, is difficult. So, uh, gentlemen, I appreciate both of you being here uh, with us today. Uh, great conversation. We have much more, of course, uh, for all of you out there on AR and VR that you can find on Tech Republic. And we certainly appreciate uh, you all watching today and we appreciate you guys being here with us.